Hello, how are you? Shall we study Bible together? Uh, before we uh, study the Bible, uh, I'd like to pray. Father in heaven, please teach us and guide us and uh, uh, teach us your word. Thank you. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, uh, we have been studying, uh, continue to study the book of Exodus. And uh, what we have learned so far is that God gave uh, seven plagues to Egypt and uh, the, the main purpose was to the acknowledge who God is uh, but however the, uh, the Pharaoh and the uh, Egyptians they are very stubborn particularly Pharaoh that he still not accept that uh, the Yahweh is God and uh, he's not still obedient to God's demand now God's demand to Pharaoh is very simple let the Israeli leave from Egypt and uh, uh, worship Yahweh uh, now, uh, because the Pharaoh is so stubborn, that now God going gave us uh, gave him the eighth and ninth plague. Uh, we're gonna learn from the uh, chapter ten, uh, entire chapter ten today. We're gonna learn from the uh, book of Exodus. Uh, shall we read chapter ten, uh, Exodus chapter ten, uh, start from verse one and two? The Lord said to Moses, "Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart." And the heart of his servants, in order to display these signs of mine before him, and in order that in the hearing of your sons and your grandsons you may tell how I made full of the Egyptians and uh, 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 about my signs that I displayed among them, so that you may know that I am the Lord. Uh, now, what he's telling here is the first two verse of the chapter ten. God. Uh, has revealed to us the why he's giving this plague and uh, one reason is so that uh, Egyptians uh, they will know the Pharaoh they understand that God is God that Yahweh is only God the truly existing God there's no other God and uh, the second reason uh, the uh, Bible revealed to us that he God doing all this so that Moses can tell the next generation about uh, who God is and uh, this is evidence this is a science uh, uh, Bible say this is a science this is evidence that God is a Yahweh and, and the name Yahweh itself is a God does exist and uh, frankly there's no other God does exist I mean that he is only one exists and so that uh, for us to understand that God does exist and this is a science for you and all this plague that he's doing it and so that uh, Moses can write Bible <laughs> that's amazing that's what the uh, purpose he's doing this entire Exodus is for reminder to us that God is God God is only one exists God is Yahweh the name Yahweh actually revealed in the book of Exodus as well and now that when God uh, gave the plague he uh, always gave some warning to the uh, Pharaoh now the telling Pharaoh that if you don't obedient if you don't uh, uh, you know uh, acknowledge who God is the Yahweh is God and not uh, obedient to his word that this plague will come um, unfortunately the uh, Pharaoh is continually uh, reject God's uh, uh, warning and then the uh, plague comes and then the, uh, they have to suffer now this kind of remind us that the Bible uh, does reveal to us in our generation that there will be uh, the tremendous turmoil uh, you know that uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, seven years of uh, so-called the tribulation the great tribulation um, that that has never been uh, uh, experienced in our entire human history and that is actually come uh, the Bible uh, warn us that there will be the end of this world see this this world that we live the uh, most of us we try to really try to be successful uh, we try to really uh, be somehow try to live uh, this uh, world in this life that uh, we just work so hard every day uh, that to make you know that put the bread on the table and somehow we try to survive in this harsh world but the Bible telling us this world you put all your effort all your time and money and all your investment in this world will be disappear um, uh, it is a warning that God does clearly give us that you have to acknowledge 
that God, you have to understand that God loved you and saved you already. And, uh, but uh, many people apparently, just like a Pharaoh, ignore the God's warning and eventually this plague. Now before God gave uh, the tribulation, God gave us many, many signs. Um, God really wanted, uh, you know, people to be saved. But so that we've we got to understand these signs. Now, what kind of signs God gave to us in our, uh, 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 this day? Uh, the, the disciple asked Jesus, that, uh, what kind of signs before you come? And Jesus gave many signs, but the first sign he gave was there will be a lot of fake uh, religions, fake uh, prophet, fake, uh, 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 you know, the people claim that they are Christ. Uh, and all, all of them are uh, fake ones. And w what surprised me is when I came back to Japan, there's a tons of new religions, the fake, oh, I shouldn't say fake, but uh, new religions pop up uh, uh, here in Japan. So, uh, I'm, I'm talking lots, uh, 10, 20, 30. Uh, now, where I used to live in the United States, there is uh, tons of uh, new religions. All, all, all the new religions came somewhere around like 100 years ago, I would say. And uh, I remember there's a uh, kind of big, humongous white building in a uh, uh, little north side of uh, Chicago. Uh, that is a, like a tourist place now, and uh, you can go. And uh, that's but that's not the Christian church. It's a it's a new religion. Uh, the new religion pop up not only U.S. or Japan, but also lots lots of new religions in Europe. What surprised me is, is that I came to Japan, and then uh, I find out there's a tons of new religion in the Philippines. I never guessed that. You know, I, I remember that uh, there's a train station right next to where I live, and uh, there's uh, two Filipino girls uh, are asking for donations, and uh, I wanted, I was curious on you know, what kind of uh, 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 donation they're asking for, and it turned out to be what I find out was they are from the new religions uh, uh, from the Philippines. Uh, now, just about 100 years ago, the entire world, there's a tons of a new religion pop up. Um, then the Bible also gave us a warning or sign say uh, after that uh, there will be a rumor of the war and the war. Um, but then the book of uh, Luke uh, revealed to us that is you still have a little time after you hear this news. Uh, sure enough the seven years ago entire world was fighting uh, the, you know uh, against country against country and just like what the Bible revealed to us and then the third and the fourth are uh, so all very similar to what described in the Revelation. Uh, now, Revelation is uh, described that tribulation is written in uh, uh, law, but there is a seventh seal. And uh, until you really open all the seals, you cannot open the law. So, uh, all that seven seals uh, uh, in the Revelation, more likely that is uh, uh, signs before the tribulation and uh, the the first sign was white horses and that's really co uh, very similar or correlate to the fake uh, uh, religions pop, uh, pop up and then second seal was uh, red horses and that kind of remind us about war and the third seal is a black horse with uh, a scale and that's kind of remind us that uh, the entire world after World War II uh, will have a really world of uh, money money that everyone's uh, work and life being uh, measured by the salary and uh, this, this black horse with the scale is saying that the one denarius that one denarius is a one day wage and so on so uh, then there will be a, a, a pale the false horses have a pale horses and that will give us a plague uh, earthquake and uh, all kind of disease and um, uh, sure enough that those we have the 21st century that we thought we're almighty human uh, science is so advanced but Still yet, uh, we have a lot, lot, lot plague. Uh, you know, coronavirus is just one of it, but before that, the uh, AIDS and the Ebola viruses, and it, it just one after others just keep coming. And then the uh, bird flu and the cow, uh, mad cow disease, <coughs> the other life <coughs> uh, uh, creatures, <coughs> livestock being killed, uh, died. All these signs that apparently. I believe that God already revealed to us. But either way, the uh, book of Exodus, <coughs> excuse me, it's really telling us all the signs uh, that God gave us a warning. But the people are so stubborn, 
they still not look into the salvation from God. All right, <clears throat> let's read. Let's continue to read the next uh, verse, uh, start from verse 3. <clears throat> so Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh and told him, This is what the Lord, the God of Hebrew, has said. How long do you refuse to humble yourself before me? Release my people so that they may serve me. But if you refuse to release my people, I am going to bring locusts into your territory tomorrow. Now, um, God, uh, through the Moses, gave the warning to the Pharaoh. And then, why you're not humble? You know, I mean, he, God already gave him the seven plagues. And then, so God said, well, if you don't be obedient, now another warning that uh, gave the Pharaoh, if you don't be obedient, uh, I want to bring locusts. Now, why locusts? Locusts is that little creature, you know, you can just step on it and kill. But then, this locust, there will be a tons, billions of trillions of locusts who will uh, come. And this locust is going to eat them up, the, all the food that they have. Now, let me show you the uh, next little uh, uh, slides here. Uh, there's a ten plague, and as you see, the plague start from the river, and that is a, something to do with the water. And then the next plague came from the uh, frog and nuts and fly. That three plagues is uh, something to do with uh, uh, water to the land to the uh, uh, air, and um, uh, you will see the uh, the fifth plague is a plague the uh, livestock. The God uh, took the uh, livestock away. And something is, uh, you know, uh, rich food, I would say. And then, then, uh, then the God gave the boil. And then the hail came from the sky. So that from the water to the land to the air to the sky. And then uh, the hail actually eat them up all the food again. And then the locusts next. The locusts will eat all the food. And darkness and death follow the ninth and tenth. Uh, by knowing the sequence, the hail probably uh, killed uh, all the, uh, uh, destroyed all the food around like February maybe, up to February, and locusts uh, eat them up all the food around coming up in uh, March to April, and darkness and death, and after that, uh, around April, uh, there will be uh, Exodus, and that is exactly the same day uh, that we call the Easter. And that is a, a Christ's a cross, or Passover feast, is exactly the same day at the Exodus. Now, as you see here, uh, the God takes the food and also reminds us that our skin becomes, so uh, how is our body being uh, going to receive like a boil? And then he uh, gradually takes uh, his blessing. The, the order of creation that he creates the, all the uh, uh, vegetables and all the greenery and he uh, pl uh, plenished the, all the fish and the waters for us to eat and also uh, he gave us a livestock but the, we think that all the food on the, all the riches on the earth is ours but the fact is it's not ours it's all belong to God it is a God's absolute blessing uh, the mercy that he gave us all this food but for for us to understand that God is God that he is the Yahweh that he takes a little uh, one by one and the first things he will do is a plague that he will do is uh, take the flag uh, uh, food and then he also remind us that you know uh, we try to clean up our body and uh, try to make looks good but then uh, you know we we, uh, we we really depend on the him to let us survive and our body is really belong to him so uh, now when we look at these plagues uh, you know hail and locusts and uh, boils and uh, the turning of the water into the uh, blood all that is also written in the tribulation uh, the tribulation apparently it's more severe, uh, the, the, the ocean become blood, uh, the Bible says, and there's a hail and locusts and people being uh, stunned by locusts and all that is also written in the tribulations and God described that in the seven trumpet and then the song. Now, God gave us so much clear warning and so much signs the people seems not still yet understand there is God. We think that our human uh, culture and uh, science that we're so smart that we can solve all the issues. The fact is we're not. Our government is absolutely powerless 
against God's plague. Um, and we know it that it's facing, but people are still not really come to God. Uh, realize He is Yahweh. God doing all this to remind us He is the God. He's the one control everything, and you don't have anything left. And here comes the locust to remind Pharaoh that he really doesn't have any food now, and uh, only death or starvation is waiting for them. Uh, let me read what happened after this uh, in uh, verse 5 and 6. They will cover the surface of the earth so that you will be unable to see the ground. They will eat the reminder of wheat uh, escaped what is left over for you from the hail. And they will eat every tree and growth, uh, grows uh, for you from the uh, field. They will fill your houses and uh, the houses of your servant and all the houses of Egypt. And such as neither your father nor your grandfather have seen since they have been in the land until this day. Then Moses turned and went out from Pharaoh. Now what, what it is is uh, God gave clear warning to Pharaoh that when these locusts come, that this, uh, these locusts, they're going to eat them up every single food left in uh, Egypt. And it had never been seen your father or grandfather. Uh, see, we human uh, prepare the, uh, our life or prepare the, uh, against our play, uh, uh, you know, natural disaster is based on the previous experience, previous generations experience. But Bible clearly indicate that all those previous human knowledge absolutely uh, powerless or meaningless because there will be a plague is much greater than those people has never been experienced. Uh, the people who start to live in Egypt now, Egypt is a very, 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 very old country. Probably the one, the oldest place that people start to live. The God said, even those people, the first person living in Egypt, uh, they never experienced this. So the locusts will come, to eat them up all the food of Egypt, and never has been experienced. Your previous ancestors' knowledge is absolutely meaningless. That same reminder the uh, Bible revealed to us, and our tribulations come. The tribulation is uh, uh, the the Bible revealed to the end of the world. We are pretty soon going to probably face. It's uh, has never been experienced in our human history, and our previous knowledge is nothing compared. Or actually, is meaningless. It, God gave us such a clear warning. And uh, in this case, uh, God gave the warning to the Pharaoh, and uh, uh, Moses left the Pharaoh's palace. And now let's see what happened after this. Uh, so from verse 7. Pharaoh's servant said to him, How long will this man be a menace to us? Release the people so that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not know that Egypt is destroyed? So the Moses and the Anon were brought back to the Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God, exactly who is going with you. Moses said, We will go with our young and our old, with our sons and daughters, and with our sheep and our cattle, and we will go, because we are to toll a pilgrimage feast for the Lord. Uh, basically what's going on is that uh, after Moses uh, gave the warning to Pharaoh and he left the palace, uh, the people surrounded all the advisors uh, to the Pharaoh said, Oh Pharaoh, please don't you understand that, that this locust will come and what they say probably will come. And when it comes, the entire Egypt will be destroyed. There are not going to be no Egypt left. And so the fellow uh, uh, summons uh, Moses, and probably this uh, servant would just run to the uh, Moses and say, you know, there's Moses just about leaving the palace, and Moses, please, please come back again, come back again. And Moses was brought back to the Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh said, okay, you can go. But the Pharaoh told Moses, so who's going? Uh, Pharaoh think, apparently thinking is not that all of them are going, the, uh, some of them are going. Then, but then Moses replied to Pharaoh, says, I'm sorry, all of them, including our uh, livestock, not even one thing's left in Egypt. We are 100%, all of our belongings will left, will, will leave uh, Egypt. Um, now, this reminded me something about us Christians, because the 
entire Egypt. Now, after this uh, locust plague, there will be a darkness is the next plague. Uh, see, entire Egypt is really a reminder is that what we are, our worlds are. Our world is a really dark place. And, uh, uh, you know, when, when you become a Christian, you got to leave the 100% from this uh, dark world. Uh, nothing should remain. Now, some people, some even Christians, uh, go to church, and when you are in the church, you are a very holy person, but as soon as you are out of the church, you go back to this dark, uh, Egypt-like uh, world, and then you just live like uh, people in the world, and then only Sunday you come to church, and some of the people even not come to church anymore. And uh, but but the Bible clearly indicate that as soon as you become a Christian, you don't belong to this world anymore. You don't even uh, citizen of this world. Um, that you got to leave. 100%, nothing remained, all of you, your physical body, everything, you just leave from the, this world and you come to the God's kingdom, you become children of God. And, um, but in case of Pharaoh, Pharaoh tempting the Moses says, so who's going? You shouldn't leave all of you, just partially, you just remain this dark Egyptian world. But yet uh, Moses replied, oh no, all, all, 100%. We're going to leave from Egypt and going to worship God. Uh, let's see what happened after this, uh, verse 10. He said, he said to them, The Lord will need to be with you if I release you and your dependents. Watch out. Trouble is right in front of you. No. Go your men, uh, go you men only and serve the Lord for, for that is what you want. Then Moses and Aaron were driven out of the Pharaoh's presence. Now, Pharaoh's actually... Uh, demand uh, only partially uh, leave and uh, just leave uh, your livestock and all the uh, family here and uh, then the Moses uh, and Aaron was kicked out from the palace now what happened after this uh, let's see in uh, verse uh, 12 the Lord said to the Moses extend your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts that they may come up over the land of Egypt and eat everything that grow in the ground, everything that the hail has left. So the Moses ex extend his staff over the land of Egypt, and then the Lord brought um, east uh, wind on the land all that day and all night. The morning came, and the east wind had brought up the locusts. Uh, now God uh, told Moses to put the hands up to the sky, and, uh, you know, uh, bring out the locusts. And then God used, this time, the wind. Uh, the wind from the sky uh, brought the locusts. And this locust actually uh, filled entire Egypt. Uh, exactly what the God told a uh, worm uh, fellow. And let's see what happened after this. Uh, the 14th. The locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and settled down in all the territory of Egypt. Uh, it was very severe. There had, uh, there had been no locusts like them before, nor will there be such ever again. They covered the surface of all the ground, so their ground became dark with them, and they ate all the vegetations uh, of the ground and all the fruits of the trees that the hail had left. Nothing green remained on the trees uh, or on anything that grow, grew in the field throughout the whole land of Egypt. Now the phrase is very clear that locusts indeed came and ate them up all the food. Uh, there's no food remained. <laughs> you know, I mean, they ate everything. Um, well, what, 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 what Pharaoh going to do? Um, you know, the only thing waiting for them is the starvation. Uh, let's see what happens in uh, verse 16. Then Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. So now forgive my sin this time only and pray to the Lord your God that he would only take this uh, death away from me. Moses went out from the Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. 
uh, well, fellow probably his panic, and he actually very surprisingly apologized he to Moses, and this time really the first time he acknowledged that I sinned against God, uh, that he he realized he's wrong and God is right, um, you know he repent. Now our God is such a merciful God that uh, if we repent, he will forgive every sin. You have been committed. Uh, he he will forgive everything, and he does going to give the, the blessing too. So this fellow, he was so stubborn until this point. But finally, when he faced the starvation to death, the uh, he 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 apparently uh, uh, you know uh, repent and he said, "Oh, I'm sorry. I was wrong." And then, sure enough, the Moses went up and started to pray to God. And then the verse 19. Uh, let me read that uh, remain. And the Lord turned a very strong west wind, and it picks up the locusts and blew, uh, blew them into the Red Sea. Not one locust remained on the, all the territory of Egypt. But the Lord heard him, uh, Pharaoh's heart, and he did not release the Israeli. Um, sure enough, God stopped the, this plague of locusts, and uh, the wind came again and then the locusts uh, uh, went to the uh, Red Sea. Now Red Sea is as you probably knew that the later the uh, Egyptian troops will be drowned but this time God let the uh, locusts drown instead and then the, he stopped but however uh, as soon as that happens uh, the fellow again uh, this guy being stubborn again not listening or not be obedient to God uh, his uh, repentance was apparently a fake one um, well, this is very sad. Some people uh, sometimes go back and forth between repentance and make up a heart on game. Um, but Pharaoh is a typical. He's, he does acknowledge that God, the right ones, and he's wrong, but yet still not come to a uh, point to believing uh, uh, God. And let's see what happened after this in the verse 21. The Lord said to Moses, Extend your hand toward the heaven so that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, the darkness so thick it can be felt. So Moses extended his hand towards heaven, and there be absolute darkness throughout the land of Egypt for the three days. Now here is that God asked Moses to put the hands to the sky, and the darkness came down to the entire Egypt. The plague started with uh, water to the land, to the air, to the sky, and uh, the hail came from the sky, and then the locust uh, is a wind from the sky. But now, Moses put the hands up, and here comes the entire universe, seems like, the entire cosmos universe came down, the darkness from the sky. This is actual plague, actually came more closer and closer to the, where the God's throne is, and uh, God directly gave him uh, now the darkness to the entire Egypt. Now how dark it was, and let's see that the next verse, uh, verse 23. No one could see another person, and no one could rise from his place for three days. But the Israeli had light in the place where they lived. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Only your flocks and herd will be retained. Even your family may go with you. Now here is the uh, Bible revealed to us that darkness so severe that they couldn't see the person next to. Um, you know, they will say, Oh, where are you? They, their eyes open, their eyes open, but they so it's pitch dark. They cannot even see the person. And so, where are you? Where are you? I cannot see. It's so dark. And then they could even leave from where they are. They couldn't even stand. It was so dark. They all of them totally lost their sight. And except there is only where the Israelis are, the, the, within a pitch dark, midst of a total darkness, that where the Israelis are, there will be a light. And the first of all, this Egypt is really a reminder that our world is like that. Our world is like uh, Egypt. And the people in the world, they cannot see each other. We cannot see 
uh, what the person's doing it next uh, next door we can see ourselves even and that is uh, uh, how dark the, this world is except the where the Christians are where the church is. church is actually the bunch of Christians and uh, that's where the churches are the only place have lights and uh, we the Christians only main reason we're here is that we should be uh, uh, shine as a uh, uh, light in a, this total pitch dark darkness in this world uh, for that sake uh, the God select the Israeli as a, uh, uh, the reminder for the entire world no this uh, God does exist uh, the God does same thing through the us and the Christian and then we supposed to Christians left totally 100% nothing remain to this dark world we now live in under the God's light and we should be joyful uh, we, we're so happy we <laughs> We <laughs> were saved, and then uh, we're so happy because it's nothing left in this world. Uh, anything we have on this world, we can share to other people, and so the people look at us and say, "Wow, they are so different. How come he's so nice to us? How come she's so wonderful? How come they're always smiling? Uh, how come they're so light?" So, all that so that people understand who God is. That there is a salvation. God loves them. That uh, the guy exactly did the same thing the Egyptians here, the total darkness, they couldn't see each other and they couldn't help each other, they couldn't really even stand where they are and only light and where the Israelites are and then the uh, Egyptians realized that's God. Now, unfortunately the fellow, however, telling Moses, okay, you guys are able to leave, all the people can leave, but the leave uh, lifestyle, you cannot take the lifestyle because from the fellow's mind, uh, the entire things in the, uh, uh, Egypt is his, and uh, including slaves. But then the slaves, which means uh, 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 these Hebrews, they can go. But livestock, which they don't have any food left in Egypt, so the livestock the, uh, the Hebrew has is uh, technically from Pharaoh's mind. That's his. And um, uh, let's see, read what happened after this. Uh, he said that uh, you know don't don't you know just leave the livestock here. And the verse 25, but Moses said, Will you also provide us with the sacrifices and the burnt offering that we may present them to the Lord our God? Our livestock must also go with us, not a hoof is to left behind. So we must take these animals to serve the Lord our God. Until we arrive there, we do not know what we must see uh, used to serve the Lord. Uh, basically, what the Moses Moses tending to Pharaoh said, "Hey Pharaoh, uh, these cows and you know, all the livestock we have is you think it's belong to you, but the fact is you gotta really uh, give up. You have to give that to our Lord, and uh, we're gonna take entire livestock as well. Nothing gonna remain, uh, even the one hoof." Uh, will remain here in the land. We take every single thing from this land, 100% uh, uh, leave from the Egypt. Uh, this is a really uh, uh, a reminder to Pharaoh that the who is in control. Uh, we think that our body, our positions, everything we have in this world is ours. The fact is, we don't own anything. Even our food is not ours. Uh, the God is just uh, giving to us, and we just don't realize that. Uh, let's continue to read the verse 27. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to release them. Pharaoh said to him, Go from me, watch out for yourself. Do not appear before me again. For when you see my face, you will die. Moses said, As do you wish, I will not see your face again. Now what happened was, uh, Pharaoh seems kind of very upset now. So Pharaoh telling Moses, go away basically uh, I don't want to see you anymore <laughs> you know if I see you next time I'm gonna kill you and then uh, Moses said okay I understand buddy I'm not gonna see you again so they left now um, to summarize this message is that God does gave us a hard time and uh, God gonna give us economical hard time and sometimes a physical hard time uh, some of you probably watching this video may you may have a hard time in your life but uh, have you really come to know that God does exist and um, uh, God gave these signs and warning and to the Pharaoh to Egypt and uh, sure enough that uh, you know if they obedient God be nice and stop but they are not obedient and then God gave and then one by one God took all the blessing 
only reason for them to realize that God is God. God is a Yahweh. He is the exist. See, this world is the pitch dark. Uh, this world is the message is uh, when you think about God, don't think about God. Now, what, what this world will tell you like this, well, after death, we don't know what will happen after we die. And this world also also telling you, well, we don't know if there's God or not. So since we really don't understand, and no matter how long you think uh, the, if there's a God or not, we'll never able to find out. So let's not think about it. Let's have a fun in this world. Let's not think about God. But Bible telling us totally different. See, do you understand? The Satan don't want us to think about God. Satan hate, detests us to look into God. Somehow he wanted to stop us to uh, uh, communicate with God. But the Bible clearly revealed to us that if you don't know if God is there or not, ask him. Ask God directly. Hey God, are you there? Are you really there? The fact is, lots of people won't do that. Maybe surprise you, but that's true. Lots of people just, oh, I don't know the God's there or not, but oh, I, no matter how long I'll think, I, I don't have an answer. But why don't you ask God? If God is truly there, don't you think God's going to answer? Now, Bible, if I, uh, let me read in the Luke chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Let me read that. So I tell you, ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be open for you for everyone who asks receive and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be open bible is absolutely clear we should ask god direct see Satan hate us doing that because soon as we talk to God, he cannot come between us and God. Uh, you know, all the cult religions uh, that I, I uh, investigate, every religion except Christianity is somebody will come between true God and you. And uh, someone or something or some, some organizations uh, will come between God and they will claim, oh, we are prophet from God. But why you need them? Why you, why you need somebody between God and you? See, Bible clearly indicate that we should directly ask God. Hey, God, tell me, are you there? Lots of people won't do it. And then God said, if you do that, God going to reveal to you. Now, let's go back to the Luke chapter 11. And then they're going to skip to the verse 13. The verse 13 said this. If you then... Although you are evil, uh, know how to give good gift to your children, how much more will the uh, Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Now, Holy Spirit will come. If you ask, if you believe in God, the Holy Spirit will come. Now, the, what is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is God's Spirit, and also the Holy Spirit is a guarantee. It is a down payment. That it's a guarantee that we go to heaven. Uh, let me read Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 13 and 14. And when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, then you believed in Christ, you are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, who is a down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of God's own position to the praise of of his glory now that is a very clear indicate that the holy spirit is a down payment holy spirit is actually it's a sealed it's a it, it, it is a really guaranteed that we are going to heaven now let me ask you if there is a two uh, split ways and uh, uh well assume that you cannot see the other side and uh one one road it's a lots of people go that way and then no one came back. Every person who go that way, no one came back. But the other, other way, the, right next to the uh, uh, road, there's a Jesus standing and Jesus said, Hey, I went back and came back. Do you remember that it's only a sign of Noah will be given? And uh, Jesus said, uh, I, I, I resurrected. I, I, went, I went and came back. Here comes the Jesus standing other way. And Jesus said, go this way this is the way to the heaven 
And then, if you believe, even before you go, you will receive the Holy Spirit as a guarantee that you go to heaven. And all this is free. Now, let me ask you, which way you, you will go? This way, no one came back. <laughs> the person who started that religion, even the Buddha or Mas uh, uh, you know, no one came back. But here, the Jesus standing, and Jesus said, this is the way. And if you believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, before even you go there, the Holy Spirit will come and reside in you. And that's a sure guarantee that uh, you go. Now, a uh, fellow, unfortunately, that he was very stubborn. And no matter what the God gave the warning, uh, Pharaoh didn't listen. And uh, eventually, uh, the Pharaoh have to, uh, Moses have to leave from the Pharaoh. Um, how about you today? Uh, which way you go? Are you really that stubborn as a Pharaoh? Or you really acknowledge that God is God, that He does exist? And if you don't know, why don't you ask directly to Him? Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for today's message. And the book of Exodus really the uh, reminder to us that you are the Yahweh and you reveal to us that you are true God. Lord, please people to understand and uh, so many people to be uh, saved. Uh, Lord, thank you. Jesus, pray. Amen. Okay, you take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.